Welcome to the, the session, Engaging Citizens. Um, we've got a, a great set of uh, six talks, six 50-minute talks, and discussion after each of the talks you can look forward to. Um, so, yeah, welcome to the session. My name is Frank Rutzer from the University of Adelaide, and I'm, I'm chairing the session. Um, so, I'd like to invite our first speaker um, to give her presentation. It's Monique Grohl and talk about Coral Watch. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Can you, is it loud and clear? Yeah, okay, good. Um, well, thank you for coming. Um, I'm the first one of this Engaging Citizens uh, session. Uh, my name is Monique. I'm one of the two project managers of Coral Watch, which is a global worldwide program. Uh, we're based at the University of Queensland in Brisbane. And I would like to talk about Coral Watch as a citizen science tool to um, monitor coral health but also create reef awareness. And why is it so important that we look after our coral reefs? So they're of natural but also a cultural value. Um, there's lots of tourism, there's fishing, uh, a lot of sponges and corals have uh, are important for the pharmaceutical industry, Alzheimer's disease and things like that. But also 500 million people around the world depend on coral reefs, the fish and uh, etc. Uh, mangroves. 10% of all jobs is related to the reef. Not necessarily on the reef straight away but when you go to your fish and chip shops, when you go to the supermarket it has to get there by truck. So there's a lot of jobs that do involve um, the reef. Almost 30 billion dollars global net benefit a year and the ocean is really big and it's only one percent or even less that is coral reef but it is the most diverse ecosystem in the world and 25 percent of all marine life is on the coral reef. On the Great Barrier Reef 6.4 billion dollars it brings in every year that's in the report from last year and 64,000 jobs are related to the reef. So the reef is important, but what does Coral Watch and what do we do with the reef? So on one hand, we are a citizen science program that monitors the reef. That's how we started back in 2002. The other hand, we're education and trying to create that awareness. Why do we have to look after the reef? What can you do at home? How can we educate our children? Because they are the future. So as I said earlier, we are worldwide. We operate at the moment in 78 countries around the world. Um, we depend on volunteers. And a lot of the monitoring is the volunteers just, we don't supervise them. We support them through social media, emails, and things like that. But they just go out by themselves. They're independent. Our method is really simple. I will get back to that later. Um, we have 15 years of data from over 200,000 corals that are surveyed on their health worldwide in the 78 countries. That's publicly available. You can go to the website, search on a country, search on a reef, search on your name. Uh, you find the data, you can download it and do whatever you want with it. Write a paper, use it in your classroom as an education tool. Um, the education and the awareness side, so we do a lot of community outreach. We go into communities, we even go into the outback, talk about the reef, Talk to farmers because what's happening on the farm has um, an effect on the reef through the creeks, through the rivers, the catchment areas. We may tailor made workshops for teachers, for students. Um, we write our own curriculum lead materials with the help of a lot of teachers because I'm not a teacher myself, but I have teachers helping us out. We have an ambassador program, we do school visits. And we're also setting up permanent monitoring sites. Um, we do this, this um, together with schools, so it's a learning process as well. Um, we also do it together with tourists. <clears throat> so the philosophy that we have is tell me and I forget. If I tell you this today, you might forget. If I show you how to do it, you might remember. But if you're actually going to do it, either out on the reef or with in here with some um, virtual reefs and virtual corals, you will remember. So the coral health chart, underwater proof, um, they last very long. They're um, 
developed in the reef. In 2002, there was a big bleaching event, and a bunch of professors and other researchers at the University of Queensland came together and they said, we have to see what's happening. So what did they do? They, in the picture you see in the top, they broke little coral fragments off and they put it under um, controlled, um, in controlled chambers and they raised the temperature and then look what was happening. And a coral has a symbiotic relationship with a little tiny algae that lives inside of polyps and that gives the color to the coral. It also provides about 90% of the food for the coral. So they're really depending on each other. Um, the coral in place gives the protection in the worldwide ocean. So when you heat the water, the algae start producing a toxic oxygen. The coral doesn't like it and gets rid of this algae and that's why it turns white. It's getting rid of the algae, it's getting rid of its color. Um, so Doing all these lab experiments, they get a six-point scale of colors, and they also took about 5,000 photographs on the reef and tried to identify which are the most common colors on the reef, and that's how they developed this chart. And then Professor Justin Marshall in 2002 is like, that's great, we can use this as a citizen science tool because it's so easy. And he took on the project, and that's why we're based at the University of Queensland. It's simple, everyone can use it. So then they had the tool and then they're like, okay, but if I give it to a scientist that's studying corals for 15 years and knows about bleaching, and then I give it to a 12-year-old that's going to high school, doesn't know anything about corals or bleaching, never even been to the reef, you know, will there be a difference in observer effect? So they also looked into that and there is none. My results are as good as your results and your results, and if I go to kindy tomorrow, the results of this five-year-old or four-year-old will be as good. So... The chart, we can use in the field to collect real life data, but we can also use it in the classroom. In the field, we, use, we dive, we snorkel, we reef walk. In the classroom, we have virtual reefs. We can use um, coral skeletons for coral identification. We can't use the coral chart because all the skeletons are white. You can use aquarium corals if you want to use real life corals, but there are many, many options. And the chart, the use stays exactly the same. So you find yourself a coral colony, you find the lightest and the darkest spot, you measure that, you match it, and then you write it down. Then you decide what kind of shape the coral has. We only use four shapes, very easy shapes, and you just choose which one is best. You record all your details on an underwater slate or a piece of paper if you're in the classroom. You enter your data online on the website or through our app, and then straight away you get feedback. And this is what people like. They don't, didn't just go out and collect colors of corals. They instantly get a graph of the growth forms that you surveyed and the colors that you surveyed and a pin on the map where your survey was. So Coral Watch engages with citizens through monitoring and education. So the community events we do, it's not only about the coral health chart. We use the coral health chart in many, many ways, but we're trying to create that awareness for the reef as well. So we have art projects. We have a, an ambassador who has a hobby and does a lot of clay work. So we came together with a bunch of people every weekend, one day in the weekend, we started claying, and we made this massive coral reef like the size of this table, and we brought it to an exhibition, Arts Meet Science, big exhibition in, in Brisbane. We do market stalls, we do movie screenings, um, we give public presentations, but we also visit schools, all levels, kindies, primaries, high schools, lectures at universities, the workshops. Um, also tourism and ed education centers use our chart, uh, diving schools, operators, yeah, you go on. Um, in the picture, there's a Reef Blitz picture on the, re on the right. That's um, the Reef Citizen Science Alliance, which are 12 to 14 <laughs> uh, citizen science group in southeast Queensland that work together. And once a year, we have the October event, which is called Reef Blitz. And we go out throughout Queensland and try to, like a bush blitz, try to get as much data from the reef that we can get. And Minister Miles in the picture is a... He's a big supporter of that. He comes out quite often on our trips. So engaging with citizens, we do worldwide, all ages, all levels. We don't differentiate between 
people. So we work with students, we work with tourists, we work with dive schools and dive clubs. We work with farmers, the ministers, the scientists, expeditioners. Um, the photo on the middle left is from a sailing ship called Fleur de Pachon, which sails around the world for the last four years. They have charts on the boat, they take tourists on the boat, the expeditioners, every time when they hit the coral reef, they jump in the water and collect data for us. Um, we work with the indigenous people. I'm very actively involved in programs in the Yarraba community south of Cairns. Visit the school, do lectures, uh, do field trips to the reef. I'm setting up a monitoring program, Lockhart River, with the indigenous community, communicating with Palm Island indigenous rangers. We have ambassador rangers, uh, or indigenous rangers as our ambassadors, um, which is one of my passions, working with those people. And we engage with our citizens through communication. So for the ambassadors, we have a monthly update about what are their fellow ambassadors around Queensland doing. We keep people informed by email. We have a lot of uh, inquiries about data, about our materials, um, just questions about, I want to set up a monitoring project, how I'm going to do that. Social media, Facebook and Twitter, face-to-face, -face, which is always the best. On a yearly base, we speak to about five to 6,000 people. Um, phone, if you upload your data and there's a potential risk of bleaching, you get a personal email that says, hey, listen, um, there's some bleaching, so bleaching alerts. We have the website, we have our educational materials, which a lot is curriculum linked. We brought out a book, a DVD, brochures, um, you name it. And this is a photo of our group of ambassadors that we trained last year in May. Um, they organized over 70 events and talked to over 3,300 people already. Uh, this May, we have another ambassador workshop. And if you're interested, please visit our website. We take applications from all over the world at the moment. So thank you.